Hey everyone. Recently I commissioned Master Tube Maker Ron Soyland to make me two special Tesla discharge tubes. One is neon, and one is argon. Uh, they are basically to give an interactive component to operating your Tesla coil. Um, to my knowledge, no one else really has had this done recently, or at least posted anything about it on the internet. I'm sure you know amateurs have made their own versions at different times, but as far as actually having a set of them commissioned to operate specifically within uh, the frequencies uh, and voltages produced by a Tesla coil for contactless uh, illumination, um, I haven't found anything. Um, it is designed for solid state Tesla coil use, not your interrupted or pulsed coils such as DRSSTCs or spark gap coils, just for solid state uh, continuous wave coils like the one I have showing right now. This is my uh, large multi harmonic solid state Tesla coil running at approximately 25 volts AC input. Quite low power, as you can tell. That's really all you need. I have a metal chain glove here, grounded to an RF ground, which actually goes down, down to the base of the secondary. And I'm going to try and film some of these tubes, and hopefully the RF doesn't knock out my camera. Up first, I believe is Argon. Now, Argon has a much higher pressure and thus a much higher breakdown voltage, but uh, still, you don't need to contact the toroid at all for operation. In fact, it's recommended that you don't get that close. So let's give it a try. The camera sees it as much brighter than the human eye. Uh, it looks purplish with a t tinge of pink to my eye. Um, on the camera, it looks very bright white and purple outlying. Now, right now, I'm about six inches from the tip of the tube to the uh, side of the toroid. Plenty of space. I don't have to worry about punch through here, and you can tell it's quite a good arc. I'm going to pull it back until it extinguishes. So it's right at the end of the range there, about seven inches away there. To get it ignited, I have to go into about three inches. And I found that with certain orientations, you get a very cool effect. Now for those of you who don't know, different gases have different characteristic colors when illuminated by electric current. Uh, argon is typically purplish because it has very strong ultraviolet, violet, blue, and red lines. However, when they're high pressure like this, um, you get other lines starting to appear, and such that you get almost a continuum of color. Uh, that is why it looks almost white, aside from the enhanced pickup by the camera. But that's the whole reason it looks more whitish to the human eye is that you start getting yellows and such in there and greens that fill out the spectrum. You really see the difference when you see the neon one next. By the way, this is a 1500 kilovolt amp coil. Uh, a uh, volt amp is the equivalent of a watt when you're using reactive components like a Tesla coil. Uh, right now it is running at vastly reduced power. This is not something you do at nearly half power or <laughs> you anything around that. I would not turn this up above about 50 volts and do this and I'd be very leery at that because there's a good chance of uh, punching through the glass in a microscopic manner which would then let all the fill gas out and the air in and your fancy tube is no more. That's argon which is my favorite right now. The reason I have a neon one as well is because there's an interesting effect that neon does. I'm sure by now you've been observing the tiny little like hairy streamers that come off there. Let's see what neon does. Let me put this down. Now the trick's going to be reaching over my uh, primary conductor there. It is shielded. <laughs> and uh, 
grabbing the tube on the other side, or do I want to switch hands and chance knocking out the camera? Because this one is grounded. I'll give it a shot switching hands. We're good. Sorry for the shakiness, folks. I don't want to break a very expensive tube. Okay, here's the neon one. Neon has a much lower breakdown voltage, and the pressure is about one third of that of the argon tube. So the breakdown voltage is going to be much lower. Thus, you have a much larger range of operation as far as distance away from the toroid. You can see I can pull back right to the point that it no longer ignites. That's about mm, nine inches away or so. But I back it into about six. And there you can see the interesting effect I was talking about. Almost feather like. Unfortunately, chain glove on glass is a little bit slippery, so it's kind of hard to get a good grip. Thankfully, Roy uh, glued on these black protective caps on the uh, sealed off end, which actually makes it rather easy to grip as well. Quite a nice bonus there. Again, I am about six and a half, seven inches away from the toroid's diameter, and I'm getting plenty of discharge. I can go in for a bit more intensity, but again, you don't want to risk the integrity of the glass. And Ron, if you're watching this at some point, I can tell you it is the glove which is getting hot and not the glass. I finally was able to tell that once I got these in person. My glove gets quite warm, but I touch the glass with my other hand, and it's not very warm at all. So this is pure neon. And if I orient it so, I get almost a single straight streamer. And you can tell it's very white there. I've actually checked this with the diffraction grating and there are distinct lines all the way up the visible spectrum at even uh, increments. So that is quite pure white light there. It's not a camera artifact. It is white. There you go. Custom solid state Tesla coil discharge tubes in various pressures and gases by Rob Soyland. Thank you, Rob. Quite happy with this.